Welcome to the cardiovascular system. This happens to be one of my favorite body systems. Uh, I worked in cardiac rehab for quite a while, so this kind of thing flows with me. So I will waste no time. Um, I do have a certain stopping point in this video. I'm going to get to the get through the blood flow and stop. So the heart pumps about 7,000 liters of blood through the body each day. It says there about 2.5 billion times in the average lifetime. That's quite a bit. Uh, you got to remember that it is a muscle, so that's kind of the amazing part that it can actually do that, and it's loaded with mitochondria. And remember, cardiac tissue is kind of different; it's all connected together. But a couple things about this system: it can, it's composed of a heart, which is a pump, and a system of vessels. Arteries go away from the heart; they carry blood away from the heart, and they branch into arterioles, and then the capillaries, and veins which actually carry blood back toward the heart. Uh, from capillaries, it goes into these little venules, which are smaller veins, to bigger veins, and then back to the heart again. So we're going to start out first, um, Well, and we'll go through these, what's called the pulmonary and systemic circuit. I'll go through that here in just a second. Okay, so there's some heart anatomy. Now look, I'm going to jump over here make this big so here's a nice outside picture of the heart it acts like a pump it is composed with chambers and this see here are the, the vessels I was talking about there's the aorta and you can even see on the back here so the aorta comes down and then here are the veins that are coming back toward the heart and you can see these vessels here I'll probably use this again here in, this, uh, in the next video these are all what are called the coronary vessels that go through the myocardium. Here's some of the auricles and I have another, uh, not that one, this one. Okay, so here's a nice little cross section and you can see the front parts taking off. Here's the left atrium, the right atrium. Look, you can even click on these and get a little close. Watch, double click them. And you can look inside, isn't that pretty cool? But uh, the heart, yeah, is composed of four chambers. There's two chambers on the top, and then you have uh, two chambers on the bottom down here. So this is the right atrium, left atrium. This down here is the right ventricle, left ventricle. So let's go back to our diagram, which is there. Okay, as far as the size of the heart, this is kind of where I'm going to be. It's about the size of a person's fist. It is located in the mediastinum, which is the middle part of the chest. It does sit off to the left as far as its orientation within the chest. And there's that. Okay. Yeah, see this? So, um, here are the uh, vena cava, there's the aorta, this is called the pulmonary artery or pulmonary trunk. But there it is, so it's right in the middle of the chest, it's about the size of your fist, so that means bigger person, bigger heart. This is called the apex, this, top, this part on the top is called the base. The heart kind of sits off to the left, there's actually, you can count them, one, two, there's three lobes of the lung on the right and there's only one and a smaller one here, two on the left because there's less room because the heart does sit off to the left. This points toward the left, uh, yeah, left hip and the base points toward the right shoulder. <clears throat> and like it says here, a third of it, um, yeah, it's uh, to the left of the mid sternal line and to the right. So, and I showed you that. So a, a big part of it is off to the left, is the best way to put it. Now, I am just going to use a picture for this, and then we'll go back. Uh, well, this is the one I was just showing you. What you have to visualize is the heart is sitting right here, and you actually can't see it. There's a part called the pericardial sac that goes around the heart. To actually see it like it's in this particular picture on your PowerPoint, you'd have to cut away what's called the pericardial sac. And these membranes up here are all part of that. And the heart actually has an extra membrane um, compared to the other, other organs in your body. 
The visceral and parietal serous membranes, they cover all major organs. The heart actually has an extra one on the outside called the fibrous. So, um, anyway, we'll, we'll, and so we'll, we'll kind of, um, we'll go through there, but through that. Um, let me, uh, let me see what's the best way to do this. Okay, well, starting on the outside, I'm going to use this picture, just picture in our PowerPoint. You see the layers, fibrous, parietal, the epicardium or visceral pericardium, they have two names, myocardium, endocardium. So these are called the layers of the heart. You have to know the correct order these go in. The fibrous pericardium is the very outside layer of this sac that I was telling you about. It's usually covered in adipose tissue. It's pretty easy to find on the, on the sheep hearts. And then what ends up happening is um, the layer underneath that is called the parietal layer. And so that layer, it does look kind of slick, but it goes this way. And you can see here it makes a turn and it comes back. And there's a space between these two layers. So this would be the epicardium or the visceral pericardium here. And then you have the pericardial cavity, which is between the parietal and the visceral layer. And this has fluid in it. It's called a serous membrane. S-E-R-O-U-S. -E serous membranes produce serous fluid, which is slick. And it's supposed to keep these two from rubbing together. So we got one, two, three, the epicardium. The myocardium is the part that looks like steak. And it's that middle section at 75% of the heart wall thickness. And then what is called the endo, which means within, lines all of the vessels uh, inside all the chambers and the uh, valves, I said vessels, all the chambers and the valves within the heart. Um, so here we go. Um, fibrous pericardium on the outside. Yeah, it protects the heart, uh, prevents the heart from overfilling, all those things. Now, like I was saying, these layers are kind of slippery. The parietal pericardium and the visceral pericardium were those two, between the two of those. And between that was what is called the pericardial cavity, and it's got serous fluid in it. There is also a cavity the heart sits in, the whole thing called the pericardial cavity. So this is more of a, it's called a potential space between the two membranes. Um, all right, well, here's that picture here. I could just use that one. But anyway, that's myocardium, visceral epicardium, parietal pericardium, and then here is the fibrous pericardium. So starting here, visceral pericardium or epicardium, so this is that top layer, because if you really wanted, you know, the number is five. There's five layers to the heart. One, two, this is the third, this is the fourth, this is the fifth. So right on top of the heart, it looks like saran wrap, actually. The myocardium, like it says here, it's 75% of the heart wall thickness. That's what you worry about when somebody's having a myocardial infarction. You don't, you don't want blood supply to the myocardium to be blocked for very long. Uh, that causes the death of cells, and then the heart is going to have trouble pumping blood the way it should. The endocardium is the inside layer here so it lines all the chambers and it also lines the valves and it is kind of a slick layer so that's all of them um now let me go down to this i'm gonna make this a little smaller so just some heart anatomy here's the aorta see this big vessel coming off the top that's the superior vena cava this here it's called the pulmonary trunk, which branches into the left and going that way over here, the right pulmonary arteries. Those go to the lungs. These are the pulmonary veins. We'll do these later. And then let me do, let's just do the chambers first. And this is all, look, everything I'm talking about starts right here, goes all throughout the outline. Here are the top chambers. This is called the right atrium. This over here is the left atrium. Those receive blood. This side receives blood from 
what is called the superior and inferior vena cava. So this dumping blood on this side. These two, which are called the pulmonary veins, they're dumping blood on the left side. So the blood is entering here. It then gets pushed down to the bottom chambers. This is called the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And the way you can orient yourself, see the left side, how thick it is, the myocardium is, compared to this side over here. The left side has to push it to the whole body, whereas the right side only has to push it to the lungs. And this is uh, the interventricular septum that goes between the two ventricles. So uh, there's the chambers. Now let's go through the valves. Uh, that blank place for the chambers was to draw those in, but it's okay. They're right here. So there's four valves. Valves are designed to keep blood going one direction so it doesn't go backwards. There's a valve here and there's a valve here. These that are coming down here, these little strings, they have a different name, but this valve here is called the tricuspid valve. It's got three cusps, three flaps. This one here is called the bicuspid valve or mitral valve, either one. I've also heard it pronounced mitral valve. Yeah, the blood gets pushed down to the bottom and then when the bottom chambers, the ventricles contract, these valves are gonna be forced shut to keep the blood from going up into there, into there. This is called the pulmonary valve, and this thing sticking around the corner, it looks like a butt peeking around the corner, is the aortic valve. And they are made of these little cusps, which are half moon shaped, so they're called semilunar valves. So that's all four valves. So I showed you this one, tricuspid on the right side between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The bicuspid is on the left side between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And then this, okay, let me go through these. Um, so these two here, what's unique about those valves is you see these strings that come down, these are called chordae tendineae, little cords of connective tissue, and they attach to the bottom here, to these areas in the bottom that are kind of uh, sticking up like that, and those are called papillary muscles. And what happens is when the bottom chambers contract, there's a lot of pressure here. It would actually push these valves back up into the atria. So what happens is when the heart, when the bottom chambers contract the ventricles, these papillary muscles, they contract and they pull on these cords and they keep these valves from going back up into the atria. So that's where the term heart strings comes from, play on somebody's heart strings. So chordae tendine, uh, little collagen cords attached to each flap, and then the papillary muscles are found on the bottom of the walls. And here's a great picture. Here's the atrium, and this is supposed to represent the ventricles contracting. You see how the blood is pushing up against this, and these are pushing down, and that allows the blood to leave the way it's supposed to go. Um, I showed you these, the semilunar valves, the pulmonary and the aortic. Um, they prevent backflow from these larger vessels here. I don't want to go up and down on these, but so blood that's leaving this way and then blood that's also going through the aorta, see the pressure is going to drop in the ventricles when the blood leaves. And so there's a tendency for blood to want to dump back into the chambers once the pressure, once these start stop contracting and the pressure drops and the fluid's gone and the volume's gone, so these valves close behind it to keep the blood from going back down to the heart. In fact, that's what the, 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 the uh, excuse me, the characteristic thump, thump of the heart, the first sound are these valves closing. The second sound are these valves closing. The uh, semilunar valves is the second sound. All right, so that, that's some general heart anatomy. And you see the aortic valve in front of the aorta here and here's the pulmonary valve, which is in front of what's called the pulmonary trunk, which goes in the pulmonary arteries. All right, we're at the, getting close to the end of our, our first video. This is blood flow through the heart. Now, this is an, oops, this is an incredible, when I pushed the wrong button. Um, 
there it is and you can even hear it and this this thing's breathing These are the bronchi, bronchioles, little things that go to the lungs. You can barely see the outline of the lungs here. And see the heart pumping. Here's the aorta, which is not going to the lungs. But there's the pulmonary trunk, which is then branching into the arteries that go to the lungs. So you need to know the pathway from how blood gets from here to the lungs and then how it gets back to the heart again love this animation okay so what we're gonna do um, I always start with the right side and then we talk about the left side in actuality the top chambers contract and push blood down at the same time there's a slight difference in, in the time but the bottom chambers then contract and push up Alrighty, so I'm going to use everything I'm about to say is in, in the outline, okay, word for word, just a nice little breakdown. So we're going to start on the right side, see the blue? This is the superior and inferior vena cava. They're carrying blood that's gone through the body, that's why it's got the blue color, the whole deoxyhemoglobin thing, remember blood that's low in oxygen has a blue color. This blood is dumping into the right atrium. And like I said, we're going to do the right side first, and then we'll come back. So blood in the right atrium goes through the tricuspid valve and is pushed down into the right ventricle. So when the heart starts to contract, the muscles in the atria, the right atrium, left atrium, are going to push blood down, and, and gravity helps a little bit as well. Now, once blood is in this area, in the right ventricle, the wall's going to contract. That's the, okay, the, the first sound you hear are these valves closing. So the blood's going to move down, and the next part, the bottom chambers are going to contract, and they're going to push it up this way. Blood in the right atrium is going to force the pulmonary valve open, that little valve right there. Blood is going to go up the trunk, and then it's going to go this way, and then it's going to follow that blue and go in this way. And if you get a chance, you can see the arrows. So this is the left and right pulmonary arteries. And yes, it is an artery and it's blue. Uh, that's an exception. Most arteries in your body are red because they're carrying blood that's high in oxygen. This one happens to be carrying blood away from the heart, but it's low in oxygen because the blood that's gone through the body. The little O2, CO2 symbols here. Blood flows into the lungs. The lungs by design are designed to deliver oxygen into the bloodstream and exchange that for carbon dioxide, which you breathe off. So. As the blood goes through the lungs, it's going to pick up oxygen. It's going to bind to hemoglobin, so it's going to be oxyhemoglobin. So it's going to start getting a red color. And these two are the pulmonary veins, and so are these two. The pulmonary veins are going to go back and dump in the left atrium. Now the left atrium, when it contracts, is going to force the bicuspid or mitral valve open and push the blood down here into the left ventricle. Now, when the left ventricle contracts, and like I was saying, they both contract at the same time. We're just doing a pathway. But see how thick the wall is? When the left ventricle contracts, it's gonna force the aortic valve open, and it's gonna push blood through the aorta. This blood branches and goes up to the upper body. This is representing down here, the lower body. And these are capillaries. See the CO2 and the oxygen? You have gas exchange there, oxygen moves down into the cells, the blood then picks up carbon dioxide, and so that's why the blood going back to the heart has a blue color, because it's in loaded oxygen, it's picked up carbon dioxide. But this is called the uh, body-wide is systemic, systemic circulation. These here are the pulmonary circulate. well this is the pulmonary, it's very short. Uh, that's why the left side is thicker than the right, it's a muscle. It has to develop more force, so it's going to have more muscle. And so it has to push it through the body. And that is blood flow. And I'll show you before I stop. See, it's word for word, right ventricle, through the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary artery. Like I said, this is actually called the trunk, and these are the arteries. 
goes to the lungs, comes back along the pulmonary veins into your red veins, dumps into the left atrium, uh, goes through the mitral valve, which is there, and then into the left ventricle, then goes through the aortic valve right there, the little uh, butt sticking around the corner, and then through the aorta. And then, like I said, it's, it's called the systemic circulation, the whole body, once it goes to the aorta. And there's a nice little flow chart for you to study. And I will start here next.